guys, it's Sine. I am so happy you decided to click play on this video because today I am gonna share my ultimate secondhand shopping guide with you guys. I've lost track of how much of my wardrobe is actually secondhand because I've made it more the rule than the exception to always check out my secondhand options whenever I want to purchase something new for my wardrobe. If I have to put a number on, I think it's around 40% of my wardrobe that is secondhand. Of course, I don't buy things like socks and undies and things like that secondhand, but basically anything else. I think that it's a huge misunderstanding that buying secondhand equals grandma clothes and equals very colorful and very boho style. Obviously, if that's the kind of style you have, that's fine. But I have a very Scandinavian, very minimal style. And even I find many of the things I have in my wardrobe secondhand. So it is definitely doable. In this video, I'm gonna teach you exactly how you do that. The trick is to stay focused and open-minded at the same time. So how in the world are you supposed to find what you're looking for in a quite overwhelming secondhand shop? Well, you're about to find out. Okay, so first things first, why even bother shopping secondhand? Well, first of all, it's obviously one of the most eco-friendly ways to purchase new items for your wardrobe because you're not putting the environment under extra pressure because you're buying something that has already been produced. So if you are one who really enjoys fashion in a way where you have frequent re replacements in your wardrobe and you definitely can't do a minimal capsule wardrobe, then shopping secondhand might be the thing for you because you can purchase new things rather frequently with a clean conscience and without putting the environment under extra pressure. Then of course there's also the matter of the price. It's often much cheaper to buy used things than to buy something entirely new, especially if you're looking for a designer item like a vintage Chanel bag, high on my wish list. but also more basic items like this vintage 100% pure silk shirt that I'm wearing today. These things will just become much more affordable if you go for a secondhand or vintage option. Like I've said a thousand times in many of my videos, trends go round and round and we rarely see something today that we haven't seen in another century. Century. So the chances of finding something that is very trendy today in a secondhand shops are very good. To me, buying secondhand clothes is one of the most mindful and slow fashion way of purchasing new things for my wardrobe. You have to look a bit more carefully, you have to treat the items more carefully, especially when you first bring them home because they might smell or they might have a hole or something you need to fix before you can actually use it. But it's just a very intimate way of shopping and I just enjoy this way of shopping and I think it's worth all the effort. I feel that the items I find in the secondhand and vintage shops are often more unique and it just makes me feel very precious every time I wear these items. Okay, so where can you shop these secondhand goodies? There are many options. Obviously, there are your local secondhand shops, you know, the physical shops. But actually, I purchase most of my secondhand items for my wardrobe online. There are many great online secondhand shops and I've spoken about many of them a lot of times here on my YouTube channel. ASOS Marketplace has definitely become one of my favorites. The shirt I'm wearing today is actually found on ASOS Marketplace. I've also bought my vintage Levi's 501 jeans on ASOS Marketplace and along with this shirt, I bought a red shirt Recently, I bought a pair of classic pumps and a red bag for my occasional wear cup capsule to kind of update it to the festive season. So the way ASOS Marketplace works, the way I've understood it is that it's basically a platform for a lot of independent vintage shops all around Europe. Many of them are based in England. So if you order a whole bunch of different things like I recently did, I ordered two shirts, a pair of pumps and a bag and all of these things came from individual sellers. So when you order something, you won't receive everything in one parcel. You'll receive these parcels individually from the different shops. I even received a handwritten card with uh, the shoes that I bought and seriously, how often do you receive something like this when you order something online? Then I also use the Danish secondhand webshop trend sales pretty frequently and I've been using it ever since I was 16, which is over 10 years ago now. And the way trend sales work is that it is private sellers like you and me who want to swap or sell old items from their wardrobe. The cool thing about 
trend sales is that you can often find newer items in there, whereas ASOS Marketplace is more vintage pieces from like the 90s and the 80s and the 70s. But on trend sales, you often find things from just last year. So the camel coat I have from and other stories is actually one that I purchased on trend sales. They still sell that one online and in their shop. So that kind of shows that, you know, you can find many newer items on trend sales. I also bought both of my acne boots on trend sales. My raincoat is also from trend sales and my wellies are from trend sales. Like I said, trend sales is Danish. So I'm gonna link some alternatives for you living abroad down below because there are many other options. There are also other online secondhand shops. One of the most well-known international secondhand web shops is Westier Collective. And it sort of works the same way as trend sales. You can often find things from the high street brands that are just, you know, older collections, but you can definitely also find vintage pieces in there. I know that shopping secondhand can be so overwhelming. I mean, there are so many different things and how are you supposed to find the good from the bad, right? So just like when you're shopping for something new, make sure you have a list so you know exactly what you're going for and also stick to that list so you don't get carried away. So let's start with having a look at how I shop secondhand online. So let's say I'm about to purchase something on ASOS Marketplace. So I would go on to ASOS Marketplace and when you want to browse their selection, make sure that you tick off the boxes pre-owned and vintage in the left sidebar because for some reason you can also purchase new things on ASOS Marketplace which I don't really get but anyway. So let's pretend that this season I am head over heels for a velvet blazer. I'm seeing velvet blazers everywhere, everywhere on social media, on all web shops and I just want to get my hands on one. So what I like to do is always check the secondhand options because like I said I know the trends go round and round and the chances of finding that velvet blazer even though you can purchase it from some brand entirely new, the chances of finding it secondhand is pretty huge. So what I would do is go on to ASOS Marketplace and I would type Velvet Blazer in the search, search bar in the top of the page. I would either write Velvet or Velvet Blazer just to sort of, you know, get all the options out there. So basically that's what I do, you know, I, I often fall in love with a certain item and I find out what describes that item, like in this case, it's the Velvet Blazer. And then I just go online and I search for that particular item and then I get a bunch of different options. Then of course you can filter the search for color and fit as well. So that's gonna make it a little less overwhelming too. But again, it's about being open-minded because maybe you were looking for a bottle green Velvet Blazer, but you only, you're only able to find one in a navy color. So. You know, you should ask yourself, could I make the navy one work just as well as the bottle green one? I know I always say that you should never compromise when it comes to style because you'll just end up not being happy with what you purchase. But when you shop secondhand, you know, that's probably the only place where I feel like you need to be a little open-minded and you need to compromise sometimes. I love all of my secondhand purchases, even though I do make those small compromises sometimes. So it's kind of a balance you have to learn to master because obviously the important thing is that you come home with something that you're gonna get a lot of joy out of using. The same thing goes for when I'm looking for something on Westier Collective or on Trend Sales. I narrow down the search, I find out which keywords I need to search for and you know, knowing what I'm looking for makes it all so much easier and a lot less overwhelming. So on Westier Collective and on Trend Sales, I would probably type something like acne Jensen boots or you know, something that is a bit more to the point um, than on ASOS Marketplace. Now, when it comes to shopping in a physical secondhand shop, obviously you can't just tick off boxes and you know make the selection less overwhelming like that. So all you can do is enjoy the ride and you know take your time and really just go through all the piles and enjoy shopping in a more slow way. So many of you know that I have my Find the Trends secondhand series here on my channel where I basically point out which trends we're seeing the particular season and then I am finding some options for you on the online secondhand shops just to prove to you that you can actually find super trendy items in secondhand versions. There are ways for you to enjoy fashion in a way where you actually make frequent replacements but where you're not like 
tearing the environment apart at the same time. So whenever you shop online for secondhand items, just like when you shop for something new, make sure you check out all of the images very thoroughly. It's not easy to return something that you purchase secondhand online, so just make sure that you, you've checked everything that you need to before you place your order so you don't have to return it or go through the trouble it might be of returning it. Also be aware that the items that you purchase will have signs of use. You're not you know, purchasing something new. It will maybe smell when you open the parcel. Maybe it will have a tiny stain or a tiny hole. Usually, usually the sellers write if there's something like that on an item. So you're already aware of that when you purchase it or before you place your order. Most things that come from a vintage shop have this vintage -y smell, but you can definitely get rid of it. It just takes a little work. So speaking of smell, how do you get rid of the vintage smell? How do you make this item feel like it wasn't once some old ladies? If I'm dealing with clothing, I like to wash the items once or maybe twice and then hang them out to dry for a day or two. You know, sometimes it's really hard getting rid of that old vintage smell. Then after using it a couple of times, the smell will be completely gone. If you're dealing with something that you can just pop into the washing machine, like for example, a leather bag or a pair of leather shoes or a jacket or something, you should try mixing a part of vodka with two parts of water and then pouring that into a spray bottle and spritz the item and then hang it out to dry. And you can repeat this more times if needed. Also, when it comes to leather products, you could try treating them with leather care because that sort of is extracts the, the bad smell from the product. There's also the option of sending it to the dry cleaners if you're dealing with a blazer or something similar. Now, I do sell some of my things from my wardrobe from time to time. I don't do it as much anymore. It was, it was more in the beginning when I started to build my capsule wardrobes and I had a lot of things that I really wanted to replace with something in a better quality or another style or something like that. I usually use trend sales for that because that's the most well-known platform in Denmark but like I said I'm gonna link other alternatives for you guys down below so you can also sell or swap some of your things. Selling and swapping things from your wardrobe is great. I've actually even sold something sometimes that I, I myself have bought secondhand so I like that it gets kind of this circular way of shopping so when you want to sell something be sure to write all the right tags that describe that product that you're dealing with so for example if you want to sell a pair of ankle boots don't just write boots you know write ankle boots leather boots black leather boots everything that describes that item so that you make it easier for people to find your items also you should try going for items that are in good quality whenever you want to purchase something yourself because obviously just because you purchase it secondhand doesn't mean that it is good quality so just when you're shopping for something new you have to make sure that you know the item that you're dealing with is in good condition and good quality from the inside and out also bear in mind that if you do purchase something new it's always good to go for the good quality items both because it lasts longer often sits better on your body as well it's easier to maintain in the long run and it just looks nicer in the long run and also, if you do reach a point where you want to sell this product, it's gonna be easier for you to sell it because people will actually be interested in that product. It's a lot harder to sell fast fashion pieces in cheap quality because people are not really interested in these. I kind of dread how our vintage shops are gonna look in 20 years from now. Ugh. So that's it for today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video and that you found it helpful, especially if you're one of those people who are kind of dreading it because you feel like it's too much work and it seems too overwhelming. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so that I'll show up in your start feed and you won't miss out on any of my new videos. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram for daily outfit inspiration and to see how I style all of these amazing vintage finds. I love you all so much and I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye guys.